Dudes, what's happening, man? This is Trent, and today I want to talk to you about a very sensitive topic. This is probably a very controversial topic. Um, I want to talk to you about doing a study versus just straight up stealing art uh, or stealing photographs and, and tracing over them, like the unscrupulous stuff that we see on art station and in the art world that we'll see even pros do. And more specifically, I want to address like why it seems like some things that, especially if you're a beginner, you look at things, techniques that a pro uses and you, and you think, well, that's cheating and that's stealing. And my, even my teacher tells me, you know, you can't do that. You can't use reference or something, but these pros are using reference. Um, you know, and you hear, well, I, you know, I don't want to use photographs in my paintings, but then you see all these photo bashing artists and it's like, why is that acceptable? You know, it's a big confusing mess. Like what's original, what's cheating, what's authentic, what's real art, I guess. Because sometimes the whole damn industry of making art these days just seems downright, just like everybody's cheating. No way, man stealing in the art community, in the art industry, in the digital era. There's stealing, there's theft, there's unscrupulous, shady backdoor shenanigans going on. People passing off other people's art as their own. Good heavens, no. But yes, it does happen. It happens constantly, it happens all the time. And I, I hate to break it to you, man, but this has been happening since long before you even realized it. Even the old masters weren't so squeaky clean when it came to this sort of a thing. But there are some things that I consider a little bit too shady, a little bit too just outright dishonest. And I, I think that's sort of my barometer. These are things that I've seen some people do that I consider to be too dishonest as artists. Uh, starting with one of my favorite stories. I was working at Capcom and uh, this portfolio came into the studio and it quite literally had my artwork in it. <laughs> I reached out to the guy and I was like, dude, uh, you, you, you pretty much just put my artwork in a portfolio that you're applying to the studio that I work at. And I was a senior concept artist. I was the only concept artist at Capcom at that time at the, at the studio in the US where I worked. So don't do that. Don't, don't ever just take somebody else's artwork and put it into your portfolio. Don't take a portion of their artwork and put it into your own paintings. Never do that. I've also seen uh, on Twitter, somebody took another person's artwork and I do, I, I retweet a lot of other people's artwork uh, when they tag me. And uh, I feel like it's my way of showcasing people who are putting in a great deal of effort. But this guy had a really nice painting. And so I retweeted it. And then I found out that he had taken somebody else's painting and just drew a tunic on the guy. He just painted a tunic onto this other person's artwork and then presented it as if it was his original piece. And I'm not gonna call out any of these people specifically because we've all done embarrassing, stupid shit before in our past, but don't ever do that. Don't just take somebody else's painting and then change a couple of things and then say, oh, look at the thing I made. You didn't make that, you took that, you stole that. A common thing that I see people doing these days is that they'll take a photograph of a cosplayer and then they'll slap it into Photoshop and then they kind of render on it a little bit and then zip it goes up onto Twitter as if they painted something. And uh, that's pretty shady too because you don't own the rights to that photograph. You're using somebody else's likeness. You're, that is their property. I mean, that cosplayer you know, spent so many hours making the costume itself and then putting together a crew to like take the photographs and set up the lighting and prepare the imagery. And then you come along and just go, yoink. I mean, how would you feel about that if somebody came along and took all your hard work and then just tried to pass it off as their own? Man, I know a lot of you guys are already on the same page with me on this, and you'd never do that sort of a thing. But I'm talking to those people who would, who don't, who don't see anything wrong with that. Now, I can't speak for everyone. I'm, I'm, I am not a voice of all professional artists everywhere. They're, everybody's gonna kind of have their own standards for what they find to be respectable process. And some people will look at even my process and say. Hey, if you can't draw that from memory on paper with paints that you mixed yourself from flowers, then I can't respect you as an artist. And I get you. But by my standards, I do nothing that I would hide or be ashamed to admit. You can download my Gumroad videos and see damn near every layer and every brushstroke of almost every painting that I do that I own anyway. Um, and you can see my process and there's nothing that I try to pass off 
uh, in any kind of deceptive way. It's like I said before, man, I show you how the sausage is made. When you tune into my channel, you get a full sausage exposure. And so for me, that's my barometer. It's like if you're exposing the entire process and you're not doing anything dishonest throughout that process, I consider that respectable creative art. You know, I mean, if you show a photograph and you say, here's my photograph, I'm gonna go, cool, cool photograph. Um, but if you present a photograph and say, I painted this, I consider that dishonest. And that's really more than we can say even about a lot of the old masters who would create light boxes and project a scene and the light from a scene onto a 2D canvas and then trace it. And like, why was that acceptable? Well, because they also had a great deal of study in their history and they also had a great deal of understanding why the light was doing it that way. They just found a shorter way to get there faster and we accept that. Honestly, probably also because they're dead and we can't publicly shame them. Hell, to this day, I mean, you've got, you know, lots of, of modern day digital artists that still, you know, they can't, they can't hold down their boner for these masters that lived, you know, 600 years ago. Not even realizing that the, a lot of those guys were just tracing too. Uh, not even to mention that in a lot of these cases, uh, you know, especially with these mural sized gallery works, uh, sometimes they weren't even drawn by the actual artist that's credited for it. They had assistance. So the original artist would just do the sketch on the wall or uh, do a smaller sized painting and then his assistants uh, would actually translate it onto the wall or paint the feet. Maybe that artist didn't even want to paint the feet. Some of these artists, they just found their shtick. But, uh, you know, to this day, they're considered legends. So that makes me wonder, like, is that fair? Is that honest? Is that reasonable? Is that art? I can't answer that for you, but, you know, for a lot of people, it's just about the final product. It doesn't matter. Each of us can only decide what we respect and what we actually appreciate. I've seen artists in the 90s that just hired models and then literally took a photograph and traced over the models and they built an entire career out of that. They were they had lines wrapped around the entire comic book convention. And it's an ongoing debate whether or not that artist is a hack or whether or not he had good design sense and chose really good lighting, etc. You know. But this video isn't about other people's opinions. This video is about my opinion. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm on my channel. I want to address tracing specifically uh, since we're on the topic here. And again, this is my, my take on it. Now I have to put in a caveat here, a, a little disclaimer, because I don't recommend that you trace and pass off the artwork as your own. Now, if you're tracing over 3D models that you yourself made, or you're tracing over poses from like, um, you know, 3D models, you know, some artists get away with that and that's fine. If it's shortcutting things and it's helping you, great, you know, use it, uh, but don't, uh, don't ever do anything that you would not admit to is I think that's generally where this is all going, by the way. My number one rule is uh, uh, don't pass off anything that you wouldn't admit to publicly. Okay, but that said, tracing can be beneficial if you're just early on in your studies. While it's very beneficial for you to trace because you're building muscle memory and you're learning along the way, you're beginning to understand, oh, if I do these hatch lines, it kind of makes it look like this curves. And oh, if I put a shadow there, it kind of makes it look like this has a shadow and it has form and there's lighting in the scene. And it makes you really pay attention to the details of the process of making a representative kind of image that can make you feel really good. And it can feel even better if people look at it and go, oh, that's super awesome. And it can kind of deflate you a little if you have to say, yeah, but I traced it. But it's better if you just don't even show those things because people don't generally tend to really appreciate it as much. And what, are you gonna really think you're gonna get taken seriously as an artist if you're still tr tracing everything? I mean, what a tragedy it would be if you actually got hired based on that work. And then they're like, hey, paint this other thing. And you're like, well, I got to find something to copy or steal from. And then the company gets sued and then they come to you and then they sue you because you passed off copyrighted uh, material from another artist as if it was your own. So what the hell? Just live an honest life, man. It's, it's easier and it's better. Good hard work will pay off in the end. Now, when you reach a professional level and your client says, hey, we need something by later today, and you need to, for instance, draw a stone monkey warrior, by all means, go on to Google, find a, uh, find a cool looking monkey head uh, with proportions and at an angle that you really like that fits with what you're envisioning in your mind and keep that image open uh, next to what you're painting. Uh, like that is reference, that is studying, that is 
uh, the, artists don't imagine the whole world in perfect detail. No, man, like every artist I've ever met still needs to pull up some reference to get mood or lighting or anatomy, or if it's a, an animal that they haven't drawn a lot before, or animal anatomy, it's not like we have this perfect view of the whole world. We have to add to our vocabulary all the time. So having good reference images open while you're painting can be very, very advantageous for you to improve your artwork. And that's not something, you don't have to show, oh, I look, I use this as a study. Like, no, you're still painting it off to the side. Oh man, this is especially true if you're trying to make sure that the likeness of the character matches the likeness of the character in other parts of the game. So like if you're doing a Hearthstone card, like what you're watching me paint in this painting, I absolutely have to pull up the 3D model. I have to pull up other artists' renditions of similar looking characters. I have to make sure that the character looks like the character that you've seen in other scenes in the game or it's similar outfits and similar details and similar expressions, etc. I'm not gonna do that for memory, man. What are you, psycho? A study is when you're adding to your mental vocabulary. It's when you're adding uh, new information and new techniques and new approaches and new knowledge to your database. And whereas tracing and copying and stealing is just literally shortcutting all of that <laughs> and just going, hey, look at this thing. And maybe that's just subject to your own value system. I mean, you know, uh, some people, a lot of people really like BS. <laughs> I mean, YouTube has shown us that, right? So yeah, the long and the short of it is, in my personal opinion on this, I feel that I wouldn't do anything that I would feel that I have to be dishonest about. I wouldn't put my name on other people's artwork. I wouldn't uh, trace over something without showing that I traced over something. I wouldn't use 3D as anything more than just a rough guide, and then I would try to do the rest on my own. You even saw it in this painting that you're watching me do. This is the, the Hearthstone card that I did for the Sunken City. I think it's called that. Ah, it's the voyage to the Sunken City. Mm -hmm. Close enough. Anyway, you saw where I had their color guide and uh, or their style guide, and I was color dabbing from that style guide. That's not wrong to me. I just needed to make sure that it matches the art style and the color vibe of the rest of the cards in the set. So you saw me pulling up other artists' artwork, keeping that on the side. None of those pixels from their artwork went into mine, but I was keeping it next to it because I need my art to look like it matches the rest of the set. You also saw me pull up the 3D model of what this character looks like in the game, the 3D model of a Naga from the game. Totally acceptable, totally doable. Uh, and some artists, hey, I don't even have a problem with artists who use a pose from a 3D model or posing program. Some artists do that. When I do have a problem is when they just straight up render it <laughs> and claim that it's a painting. If you can't do it, don't try to shortcut it. But, uh, you know, this is a fairly nuanced conversation where a lot of people are going to have a lot of different opinions and views about this. We all know how popular and welcome nuance is in YouTube discussions, as well as differences of opinion. So, of course, I want to welcome you to leave some of your own experiences in the comments below this video for a calm and reasonable and very rational discussion about it. As you might have guessed, I do have a Hearthstone workshop available over on my Gumroad channel. So if you are interested in making card art for a trading card game, such as Hearthstone or Magic the Gathering or Legends of Runeterra, this will be right up your alley. There's almost 40 hours worth of content just in that workshop alone of real-time videos for a good number of the, the artwork that I've done for the... Hearthstone video game. All right, dudes, that's it for me this week. And if you have any questions about life as an artist, please drop those in the comments below and I will catch y'all next week. That's every Friday I'm here and sometimes more. So until then, a ciao, baby. Oh yeah.